If you're an avid fishing YouTuber, you will have seen the clips of freshwater predators doing what comes naturally to them. Like this one, taking a defenseless baby duck right from under its mother's nose. Amazing, powerful, and a little hilarious. Don't often get to see that sort of stuff on Disney cartoons. You've gotta love the internet. That was crazy. In the UK, pike, zander, and perch are at the top of the fishy food chain when it comes to our fresh waters, that is. And they have been both legendary monsters of the deep that can eat bull-retrieving Jack Russells and even pull in small children by the ankles whilst they're paddling. That's just some of the tales I've heard. And they can also be admired prehistoric villains that some anglers just can't resist to tease, catch, and then take pictures of. But there is no doubt that they are a great sport all throughout the year. Fishing for them with lures they love to chase, top swimming frogs that they love to smash, and smelly dead baits that are an inviting treat too good to pass up. What sets these apart from most of the cuter corn pellet and maggot munching freshwater fish is these pointy things in their huge gobs. To show you what I mean, we're back with predator expert Gary Palmer, and we're taking a trip up the River Avon on his boat Wet and Wild to hunt out the hunters to show you their hunting gear. No sooner than being guided out by the Breed and Marina pilot swan, Gary was just showing how one of his lures looks as it swims next to the boat, and boom, we have our first set of gnashers to show you. See if we can show you the dentistry on a little baby pike. If I just slide my fingers in there, it doesn't hurt him at all. You can see quite large teeth all the way along the outside edge. It's where they just literally just grab hold and that entire pad all the way through is just millions of little tiny teeth that just grab hold. Once you're in there, you're not coming out. As simple as that. Um, when you're actually holding them, I can slide my fingers inside there. I'm not near any teeth. So I'm not gonna get bitten holding him like that. And it's one of the safest ways to hold the fish. Can't jump away from you, you've got control of it. Um, one of the other things is just while we're looking at it and closer, just look at that pike side, how absolutely beautiful the colours are in it, they're just stunning. How people can hurt these fish is just beyond me. Beautiful. So that was the successful lure, which is just the Salmo Executor. 12 centimetre, lovely lure, just chuck it in troll. As you can see, the lure is covered in a combination of hook rash from the trolling, but mainly from teeth, from pike, where it's just been smashed so many times over the months and you can just see you know you can imagine the dentistry on a pike to just be able to knock chips off it as it goes along speaking of going along we put the boat into gear and no sooner than getting up to the full trolling speed of around warp factor two miles an hour we get another tap on a different lure and the teeth are getting bigger to get all wrapped up inside the net. But if you look carefully, there are signs that Quickly something weeks. with even bigger teeth are out there. Yeah, of, uh, yeah something's had a... looks like someone's taken a bite out of him. But uh, he's definitely been in the wars. But uh, we'll pop him back. And let him swim off. And away he goes straight underneath the boat. And almost as if to prove a point, we spot something floating in the river. First, we think it's a plastic bag, then a swan. But regretfully, it turns out to be a very large Avon pike. It looks and smells like it's been on its downstream journey for a while, and it's such a shame to see, but on a positive note, it shows that they can grow to a good size in this healthy river. Yeah. 
And it's amazing what else you find just floating down the waterways of the UK, isn't it? And when some of the top predator hunters bump into each other on the river, it can take hours to get them apart again, swapping lures, ideas and gossip. Just the blades just fluttering on the surface. Water just erupted, 18 and a half pounder. It's the crenellated yeah. metal work. Straight away, as soon as I saw it, I was like, Say, oh, so you've tried it then since the article. I'm going to have to switch over just because there's no reels in the UK that I can get. That one's got an orange side tip and the other one I don't and, see. and it just, any flow or current will just make the end of the tail just gently and it's lethal for that method. But, it's like but eventually tail. they are prized apart and we get fishing for any other sets of teeth we can inspect. But what are the main differences between the chompers of our predators? Massive difference, they're not like each other at all. Um, the pike's got far more teeth, tends to have lots more smaller ones. Um, the, most, the, the thing that the Xander's most famous for, or infamous for, are the dentistry, the two front teeth that look a bit like a vampire fish. That was just catching on the bottom. Just pull it off. Um, the Xander tend to have two right, quite prominent front teeth, top and bottom, which it almost uses to, to grab. You can quite often see where they've hit a fish and dropped it. They've got the little puncture marks on it. Um, when people first started fishing for them, they used to call them vampire fish and everything. For us to show you what these fangs look like, we have to catch one first. And Xanders are notorious for being down deep, so we swap our methods to jig heads to see if we can tempt one up. Dan and Yan seem to be working their magic and they pulled out another little pike crawl. It's like a pike, but very, very small. A perfect one in miniature. Uh, we just need its great, 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 great grandma. And while filming that, I think Gary pulled this little beauty out of his lunchbox. Lovely little Xander. Beautiful colour. They look stunning. All those little spots and flecks all over the rear fins. The spines are like needles. You've got to be so careful when you're handling them. Um, but let's have a look at the business end. Once they clamp them shut, they really don't want to open. Now, with a Xander, you can tell a difference straight away there's nowhere near as many visible teeth. You've got the two grabbing ones at the bottom, hence the vampire nickname, and you've got two grabbing ones at the top, there and there. And then all the way around, serrated lots of little teeth all the way around the edges, and then lines of teeth running back. But as you can see, there's far less armory, there's far less teeth in there, um, but the Xander really doesn't need it, because once it grabs hold with these front ones, it's not letting go. The other thing with the Xander is the amount of pressure they can exert with their jaws is massive. And you notice that the front teeth almost interlock as the mouth closes. They just miss each other. So when they grab hold, they really do just grab hold. They may be fierce looking and they may be killers, but they are also quite vulnerable in their own way. And it's our responsibility to make sure we handle them with care. Just like these beauties that Dan and Yan hooked just moments after we left. Always the way. But lucky for us, Yan was there with his camera. If you would like a guided fishing experience on a river, then contact Gary at river-guide.co.uk.